Welcome to Canon City Comic Club, an episodic examination of the most memorable storylines in comic books. I'm your host, Tristan Cooper, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, a very appropriate guest, Monster Mom, Julie Le Petit. If Hello. Me. Hello. How is it going? It's pretty good. Good. It's pretty good. I'm happy to be here for uh, Monstrous. Yes. yes. We are, I'm, I'm excited to read this. Also here, Carolyn Page. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I can't wait to talk about this book. Okay. And you can't spell monstrous without stress. And I did not feel stressed reading this book. Okay. Because it was Good. A, a true joy. Put that on the back of volume three of <laughs> Monstrous. <laughs> a very easy sentence. Uh, both <laughs> Straight uh, to the point. <laughs> both Julie and I have read this before. Yep. I think years ago when the first volume came out, Monstrous uh, Volume 1 by Marjorie Lu and Sana Takeda. Um, it had a lot of buzz early on, especially because this monster size like first issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I read the uh, the first volume, but it's been a while. I haven't kept up with the series. I know it's still ongoing. It, it definitely feels like like watching the first like four episodes of an anime and just yeah. like leaving it hanging because there's a lot of threads introduced mm-hmm. like it's right a lot. away. Uh, what did you remember about? Because you haven't read it or anything else since, right? Right. What, what stuck out to you in the years since you had read it? And what uh, was different when you reread it? That's a good question. Um, I think when I was trying to summarize it for um, uh, for my friends, because I was telling them that I had to reread it, mm-hmm. um, I <laughs> I just said I think a lot <laughs> mm-hmm. because there's just a lot that happens in that first volume. Yeah, uh, it's it's just a lot. Like they they throw you into this world mm-hmm. that it. it is just so many things and mm-hmm. there's so many things that it would have just like accepted, but then they go into like the whole history mm-hmm. of why these things are in this. Sure. So when I had summarized it for friends, I was like, it's about this war happened and there's mm-hmm. like Tech. special people. Yep. Okay. <laughs> who are like yep. sometimes animals and sometimes okay. not. Yes. Who are like used as slaves, uh-huh. even though the war came to a, a truce or yep. Right, okay. and then I was so like, you, "You nailed it! Yeah, you nailed it!" Reading right from Wikipedia, huh? Episode <laughs> over. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I, it. it's just like those were literally the only things that I had like taken away. I think if you had asked me right after I read it the first time, that would have been my only takeaway. Sure, too. Sure, like yeah, it's just it's it was a lot of of things, very cool things, but yeah, it's very dense, uh, both in storytelling and I think like artwork. Yeah. Uh, mm. Uh, world building, a lot of that. Let's just yeah. get right into it. We're skipping continuity catch up today because this is volume one of a brand new series. So uh, we'll get right into the book breakdown. So we start with uh, Micah Half Wolf, mm-hmm. who's the protagonist of the story. She's a teen. She's a teen. A sexy teen. Uh, she's a teen? She's se- 17, said in the book. A mm. sexy 17. <laughs> a sexy oh. 17. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I honestly didn't... thought she was like in her early twenties. That that is the vibe that I got. But they keep saying like, "Oh, you're a child." And she's like, "No, uh, I'm a teen. I'm not a child." <laughs> she says, "No, uh, I'm a teen." She says she she talks unlike everyone else in the book. She talks very like casually and like like a modern mm. teen. Sure, she, she got goes, that rebellious teen streak. Yeah. yeah, that could be a teen streak, or I've seen some shit. Yes. You know, could exactly. Be, could be a teenager, could just be trauma. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we see, uh, we start with her like enslaved and being like sold at right. an auction, I think. They start you off like that first page is like full of like jargon, like right away, like organics yeah. and, and all this stuff. And like, it took, it takes a while before uh, a lot of that like stops like jarring me out of it a little bit because yeah. I know like once you get through it like you know that there's so much so they have to start introducing it right away but like yeah. when they start like name dropping like all sorts of like in universe like like terminology mm-hmm. right away i'm just like okay okay i get it yeah i get the jargon and stuff but oh i liked that <laughs> i thought it was like really i was just like yes we're not in your world we're sure. in a new magical world like, yeah. right away i thought that was so Fun. That's it, true. It is very anime to me, and that like <laughs> anime explains like everything like immediately, right? And just like goes into deep detail. We'll, we'll stop an episode yeah. cold just to explain to you what an arcanic is. Yeah. In this case, it's like a like a magical part human, and like Micah is kind of quote unquote lucky in this case because she look, appears completely human 
a lot of arcanics don't appear completely human, so they're very easy to spot and right. enslave. And it's hard and to be human when you got a big old owl head or something. Yes. Yeah, or yeah. cat ears or a fox tail. Mm -hmm. mm. I used to say, uh, you know, you're in a dense anime when the intro is just like, "This is the history of things." Here's the. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking of when I was reading Monstrous. I was just like, if this were an anime, the whole intro would just be, a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. Arcana's mm -hmm. like, you know, one of those the Fire things. Nation attacked. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then cut to theme song that's like 20 seconds long because mm -hmm. they spent the whole, a whole solid minute trying to catch you up. Yes. And refresh uh, you every time. Oh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it does take a while for me to like figure out what was going on because like, when I re I read it I read it years ago and then I reread it and then I and I looked up a summary just to make sure I wasn't missing anything but I, I I sort of like spaced the idea that she's in there on purpose yeah uh she's captured on purpose I love yeah. that like, she has some like thought doesn't she have some like thought bubbles that are like I never thought I'd be here but now mm -hmm. I'm back willingly or something yeah yes yeah because she's thinking of uh like she's Thinking it in her head, mm -hmm. but as if she were talking to her friend, T right. Tuya? Tuya, who's Tuya. Uh, who's a presence in the book, but like does not really play a major role beyond like uh, like memories and stuff. And like yeah. there's a reveal at the end, uh, but uh, we can't really get into it too much now because it, it that's what's the tough part about doing like something the beginning of like a long ongoing book is that like there are all these threats that we're not going to be resolved, so uh, it's right. tough to. They get onto it, but uh, what is fun is that she immediately commits murder. She yep. murders the the cackling guard uh, by just like, smushing her like with a with the with the jail cell itself. Yeah. Her, her power is finally awakened. If anyone deserves to be murdered, it's that guard. Yeah, she was not nice. No. Talking about doing things with the cattle prod. It's not oh, right. Oh yeah, it's not right. It's she not got good. she got cubed. She got cubed up she by really the. She really did. Cubed up. And uh, she get real smushed. Uh, the art like wombat's poop. Yeah, <laughs> we can't get into wombat's poop. We did before the podcast we for reasons unknown. Did. <laughs> Long story short, wombats have square poop, so they can stack it so other people know that uh, they live here. They, 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 they live here. <laughs> this is my place. I do that at my house too. Yeah, Google it. I'm do sure do not come over. I'm sure there's a very special episode of Planet Earth all about wombat poop. <laughs> Uh, but we can't get into that now because uh, Micah is on like the war path. She kills like so many people that so much murder off the bat. Like like cuts off people's heads, and she's yeah. got this um mo like monster power inside of her that like later awakens. At, but first, she's got to like use a flamethrower. Like, yeah, a steam it's kind awesome. of steampunky, like kind of like it's more magical. I think. Yeah, it reminded me of um a very specific aesthetic that happens in like. Uh, the more recent Final Fantasy games mm. where there's just like a lot of ornate gold on things for yeah. no reason. Sure. Yeah, it's like steampunk adjacent, but yeah. like intricate like clockwork more than yeah. Yeah. than like steampunk. Sure. Yeah. There, I also, I also like thought a lot Astrolabe of Astrolabe kind of shit. Sure. Yeah. I was thinking a lot of uh, Full Metal Alchemist when I was reading this oh, for yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Also because the monster reminds me of uh, one of the uh, the Pride, Same, yeah, pride, yeah, the yeah. Ten tentacle monsters, you know, yeah, you yeah. know how it is, you <laughs> yeah, know with a lot of eyeballs, yeah. you know. So As she, you do. uh, so when Micah goes on the warpath, she kills Sophia the witch by burning her and then stabbing her. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Which was <laughs> when I reread it, I was like, I I did not remember that she lived. Then I reread it, and I was like. Huh. I did not remember that she made it through this. <laughs> I mean, she also kills like other people in this. Like the guard, definitely dead. Yeah. She chops off some lady's head, definitely dead. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, she gets into a fight uh, with uh, Yvette, who is Sophia's mom. Yeah. yeah. She sucks the soul out of her or something, feeds. Yeah. She's not dead either. Yeah. There's. It's kind of bazonkers. The other thing is that the book. You know, before we start questioning the the main character, the book like very clearly establishes like this is good side, this is bad side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because like that jailer that you know we said right. deserves yeah. to be killed right off the bat is like dragging what looks like children. I don't know 
how age works for them. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're actually like older or if they are children, mm -hmm. but you know, they're like dragging off children. And then you see like a scene of them, like the child is like, you know, in pieces on a table and you're like, oh, cool. Bad side, good side. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Clearly established. So then when, you know, Micah's going around killing them, you're Murdering like- Murdering everyone, yeah. Yep. But, but cool. I think good. that's actually part, a uh, cool part of the book because it doesn't stay like that throughout. Like there are yeah. hints no. later sure. in the story that it's not as simple as it first appears. Right, right. And that like atrocities are committed and so right. there's bad individuals, but like mm -hmm. maybe the overall, this side isn't as bad both as it Both sides. Seems. Is what we're saying. Though there's good people on both sides is not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not condoning these atrocities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, well, a lot of it really begins when she fights Yvette, who's right. the old lady with the scar on her face. I don't think we might not have any uh, footage of her, but what we do have uh, a screen cap of is when she like tears open this like machine. And like it, it zaps her, and it seems to like unlock like her power because mm -hmm. she oh, has right. like psychic powers before this, and this is partly how she breaks out. But like this is what awakens like the monster. Yeah, because isn't it mm -hmm. like a, a suppressor? And she's like, no, no, blah blah blah, is supposed to be immune to this. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, everything makes sense. And then mm -hmm. like her soul gets sucked out or whatever. Sure. And yeah. you're like, <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, that that right. all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Uh, the whole time, uh, she's kind of guarding uh, a couple children, one named Kippa, an adorable mm -hmm. little cat child, fox child. Fox, fox child. child. Fox yeah. child. It's got a big, big bushy, bushy tail. tail. Yeah. Very cute. I really, she was like holding her tail to yeah. her the whole mm -hmm. time. I think they so also right call her field. little fox later. Mm -hmm. I think Micah specifically refers to her as sure. little fox. It's a, not a creative, but a very apt nickname. Yeah. yeah. There's also uh, later, later when they, they all escape, a cat joins them as well. <laughs> So I love the cat. Cat, cool. had, cat has three tails. Is it two, two tails? Two, two tails. tails. And uh, the cat is, cat talks. Yeah. And it's just very sassy. Yeah. Not unlike Sassy the cat from the movie Homeward Bound. Very good. Also Homeward Bound Two, Lost never, in New York. I've Lost in San seen, Francisco. <laughs> I've never seen Homeward Bound. I mean, it's really? too late. It's much yeah. too late. Oh, I have been wondering about that movie, how it would hold up on a rewatch. And <sighs> Julia, I think we should watch that together. I. Listen, I don't do well with things that involve like animals and emotions. Is sure. it too much? For oh, you it's to too much. Uh, the ending would would be a lot. I think. Yeah, I remember. You would just find oh, me yeah, on yeah. the floor, okay. like just just yeah. crying behind the couch. That's how I find you every morning. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Except like, under my desk. Office, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh hey. Looking at dog videos again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so good. <laughs> <laughs> the soldier just came home. For more, and the dog is so happy. <laughs> the dog remembers him because, of course, the dog remembers. Yeah, no, that's me. Yeah, we uh, joke, but that's me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, as far as the story goes, uh, from from now on, like uh, the unlocked power within uh, Micah is almost like kind of like venom, or yeah, also yeah, a little bit. Also reminded comparison. me of Princess Mononoke, the arm. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We haven't mentioned up to this point that Micah uh, has one uh, arm chopped off at the elbow, right? Yeah. And that's like where the monster seems to come from. Yeah, it comes out just like little little goopies, uh, exactly like how it does in Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Except in Princess Mononoke, it comes out like spirit wise first, sure. and then it solidifies. Yeah. But this is just like straight up, just like. Meh. Yeah. Like tentacles. Yeah, just yeah. like sticking out and growing Goop. out, and it looks painful. Goop and tentacles, yeah, all in one. Delicious. Yeah, uh, and the the power, like it seems, she accidentally like murders a child. Oh yeah, yeah. It was also, I mean, that kid was <laughs> oh has God. gone Wait, through what? a lot. Oh, okay, the kid was had been slowly cannibalized. Sure. Yeah. Um, because uh, I hope this isn't jumping ahead too much, but you find out later that they the Arcanic's bones have like a magic property to them mm -hmm. that's right. super healing, but mm -hmm. only their bones, I guess. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of get get at their bones, mm -hmm. and that's under your skin. Yeah. So it feels like counterproductive to use child bones because those I feel like I would have less. There's just less bones there for a child. But that's also, true. kids typically heal faster. Hmm. Huh. So, you know, they uh they get over being sick faster, they okay. heal faster. So, like maybe that's the through line. Okay. Either way, it was really sick. All right, you you convinced me we should harvest child bones. <laughs> no. Oh god. No. <laughs> Please. Oh god. Uh but I mean what 
the monster is uh, it's so hard to control that it almost kills Kippa, the little fox kid, and that yeah. she just stops right. herself from that. But like, she definitely sees in other places as well. Yeah, and she kind of hooks up with uh, some uh, travelers. She they want to go south because she found a photo in that room where she murdered, uh, right? Quote unquote, murdered Yvette with her. Yvette, her mom, and a couple other people that she doesn't recognize. So a she's looking fish boy. A fish boy. Yeah. Oh, uh, we didn't get to see the fish Gil's. boy does not appear in the book, and I was disappointed because I want to see I the fish boy. I hope his name is Gil. Is Gil? Yeah. There's yeah, some, I hope so too. Is there dog people later? Like br- very briefly. Yeah, there was um there was a a wolf a wolf woman. Yeah. Who, the queen. Yeah. The so, high wolf queen. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And like the art for that, we haven't spoken a lot about the art yet, but mm-hmm. like the art yeah. for that, it looks like they took a photo of a wolf and put like sexy lady eyes and those mm-hmm. like drew hair on top and it cracks yeah. me up every time. Yeah. I, the art in this book is stunningly gorgeous, sure. yeah. beautifully intricate, more than a little sexy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and except the wolf queen mm-hmm did bother me. It reminded me of like a weird Chuck E. Cheese animatronic mm. in a mm-hmm. strange it way. It reminded me of something like Out of the Dark Crystal or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little dark crystal-y. I think that's fine. Uh, they have a lot of different like very like cute animals. They have like, real animals that talk. Right. And, mm-hmm. and then they, they, have, they can have unsettling animals as well. It yeah. wasn't unsettling. I thought it was like boop, 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 Kona Derpy looking. <laughs> I did find the art to be like a little much sometimes. Like yeah. you know, um comics I feel <laughs> they're still laughing about it. I don't know. I don't know if they're laughing at that, but they're laughing at something. Um like I feel like comics you know, the the thing that you strive for when you draw comics is to get the main point across mm-hmm. and then there's mm-hmm. just like if you add too much, mm-hmm. there there's this there's kind of this rule where the more that you add to a panel, the more time someone's going to spend looking at it. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to save those for special moments for like, you know, full page, sure. one panel things mm-hmm. uh, so that it's really like a concrete moment or sometimes people use it so that, you know, the pacing gets slowed down. But the pacing of the actual comic was so fast. Mm-hmm. And then the drawing, there was just like so much incredible detail that it felt like I was doing like an injustice to just Mm -hmm. like go through it to the next one. Mm. But then that broke up the pacing for me. I don't know. It was Mm. like, I was trying to get too much information from the art that wasn't needed. Mm -hmm. And then like it ruined the pacing a little bit for me. Interesting. Yeah. As an illustrator, I mean, I'm sure it hurt extra for you to just like look at this like (laughs) panel someone spent hours on and then just go go, boop. Just there were like <laughs> so many backgrounds where I was like, oh, no, there's so many like windows in this. There's so much perspective. Like there's so much you anxiety. In the yeah, or going like through it. they have those like full page spreads where you have like Micah's hair going. There's one yeah. page in particular where her hair is going into like the tentacles of the eye, yeah. which is standing you know right above her, and mm-hmm. it looks super cool. But I can't imagine how long someone <laughs> spent like inking that and then coloring it and putting the background as mostly black so that you don't see those lines at all. You know, like it was you only saw it if you like really stared at it and like really like put it up to your face. And you're like, oh, yeah, look at all these like those little tentacle lines. But she's like, yeah. oh, my God, <laughs> my heart, my hand, oh, my yeah. hand. <laughs> Uh, that's a such an interesting perspective because like I I see the the richness of the art in this as like heightening the re readability of it. Sure. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, I kn- I know not everyone does that, but like I'm a big rewatcher, re reader mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. things. Like if I like something, I'll go back. You know, mm-hmm. maybe right. to a n- unhealthy amount sure. and like be like, this is the only thing I love. Let me read it again and <laughs> this again. This is my again. life now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to reading this. I like you guys. I had read just the first issue when it came out, mm-hmm. but I'd kind of lost track of it. And then, so I look forward to reading this again mm-hmm. and again and again. Uh, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, going back to where we are in the story, um, Micah has a really big problem with the fact that she needs to feed. Yes, she keeps talking about like I don't. I don't want to eat like the, I'm not a monster. I'm not a monster. I'm not yeah. a monster. Yeah. And then, and then you she know. goes next door to five guys. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then it's fine. <laughs> and then it's all salt. Yeah. Mm. Um, five guys. 
but there is like a there's a, a panel at the end where she kind of just owns up to it and she just says literally I'm gonna eat you, bitch. And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like it's this line that cracks me up because she also like comes out and all like the the tentacles are coming out of her arm and she's just like so like, yeah, okay, we're doing this. Let's eat. Yeah, you know. Uh, I hungry. thought that was an interesting growth. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get to recognize your strengths and weaknesses and yeah. how they might be intertwined. <laughs> yep. A little bit. Uh, it seems like she's besides that like quote unquote weakness that she is like unable to control her capacity uh or, or thirst or hunger right mm-hmm. uh, that she's kind of like unstoppable like otherwise because yeah. she, like an inquisitrix comes by which is like the sorceress like mm-hmm. inquisitrix is a great title <laughs> i want everyone to only refer to me as inquisitrix carolyn it's, from now on it it sounds like like a dominatrix that just needles yeah. you with questions mm-hmm. oh you know, wow, just like really like gets, uh huh. You know, just like really brings up all of your guilt. Uh-huh. Like, have you called your mother recently? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, I think I think you should. There is you a know? real market for that. I'm pretty <laughs> I'm sure this like, oh. is a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, uh, we, I'm sure we looked up Inquisitrix on Craigslist. We would yeah. <laughs> many, and many, many queries. Yeah, and requests. It also sounds like sort of a late 70s Batman villain. Oh, yeah. Like the Inquisitrix. Sure. Lady, sure. sort of a Lady Riddler. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, that makes sense. It's yeah. something on the old school, like Avengers, not the Marvel one, but like right. the- Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Diana Rigg situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, as far as that, like the, she just like dispatches the Inquisitrix very easily. Yeah. Like she just chops off her arm and like doesn't eat her. Yeah. Later, someone else eats her. Uh, a lot of eating in this. A uh, lot of lot of eating. A lot of, of uh, people draining life force. Yeah, as well. Uh, what uh, she doesn't. What's weird to me is that like she doesn't eat the person, the Inquisitrix, but she does eat like the soldier, uh, like in the forest later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the one that was injured, and one that had almost like kind of like tried to like save a baby from being killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah I felt bad. Well, she. The the one that tried to save the baby from being killed mm-hmm. gets her throat cut out by the cat. Okay. That's what they mentioned. I remember, because I was rereading that part on the train this morning, sure. and I was just like, I am kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Rethinking about getting a cat. Uh, <laughs> brutal. Cats are, cats are pretty brutal. There's multiple... Multiple cats in this in this book as well. I love it. I love all the cats. There's one cat that comes up later that we'll talk about. Yeah, that very I, good. I I I just love. Good. I oh, love him. Yeah. We have to get He's to amazing. yeah. Uh, one of the few uh, prominent male characters in the story is an Arcanic Lord mm-hmm. uh, named Corvin. Yep, I the think. big winged. He's like it looks like friend. an angel, angel with like a yeah like an angel looking yeah dude. with a big battle axe, dark angel, and he looks like yeah. a yeah. his face is like a half broken statue, a real old bit. testament yeah. angel. Even the monster inside who kind of talks to to Micah sometimes is like, hey, don't mess with this guy. <laughs> yeah, he, I can't. This guy's, I can't this guy's do a real anything. deal. My goop, right. my goop doesn't do anything. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't yeah. help you out of here. And so like, there's this funny moment where she uh she like. She and the monster have to talk, but mm-hmm. like she just goes to pretend to pee. It's like one of the few like like anime comic relief moments yeah. in the book uh-huh. where you just see the this like this like cosmic, you know, perfect god go like oh, she's popping a squat over there. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Can't you do that somewhere else? <laughs> yeah. That's awkward. Uh so she has to follow uh the Arcanic Lord because like obvi- I mean, obviously like it's a she can't do anything, but it's gonna be a trap. Of right. some kind, right? Um, so she is trapped in this like sarcophagus thing, mm-hmm. which is where she has a lot of dreams about her mother. About, right. I think the the goop monster is there, almost like in a no face like personification, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of just like looming nearby, just mm-hmm. like, hey, what's going on? What uh, what do you want to do about this? The the design for the eye monster in her dreams really reminded me of Full Metal Alchemist because. There's a character in Full Metal Alchemist that just has, like, that one big eye in his head, sure. and then just like that big mouth, and then he's just covered in a lot of eyes. Other than sure. that, and he just kind of like goops around. He's got kind of this like dad bod belly too, which makes me laugh. Sure, which time. one is that? Is that that's not pride? No, it's um, I think it's like, 
I I always forget what he actually is, but he's like part of Father. Okay. He's like towards the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, yeah, he's like this big shadow creature, mm-hmm. and uh, he's just really goofy. Yeah. Uh, but I always forget what his actual name is. But you can see a lot of like anime influences. Yeah. In the in this in the world building. Yeah. In the art itself, like uh, the artist was inspired. It seems like by uh. Um, Japanese like uh, woodblock mm, yeah, art absolutely. and also uh, yokai yep. art as well. Um, Another very anime part is is that I felt like every like twenty pages, Micah just had a new power where people were like impossible, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, is so totally, anime totally. to me. You know, they're like, you can't also be this. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, like when they're breaking that that machine that's supposed to like suppress her powers, mm-hmm. and she was like. No, you must also be this other thing. And I was like, all right, that's number one. And then she also has like this this monster that lives in her. That's number two. Mm-hmm. And like she's also has some like royal bloodline or something. That's number three. Check. Check. Um it's just like there's every twenty pages they were like, She's also immune to this because she's also this. And she's the, the most classic powerful. anime trope of like this sort of disenfranchised like youth, you're yeah. like you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, it and, has to be you. Uh, absolutely, she's the chosen one with the goop monster. Yeah, yeah. inside her, and, and then like, also like her the quest to yeah find her past. Yeah, and yeah. I mean mm-hmm. that's what's more anime than that. I don't know. Yeah, I can't, I can't, she's like I can't trying to find her mom. Yep, or you know find out. Well, not find her mom, but like find out what happened mm-hmm. there because yeah. the mom's dead. Yeah, yeah. But, they mm-hmm. say, but I feel like. No one's really dead in No this. one's really has yet to die except for all of the nameless characters that have died. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. The ones who, like, just n- very normally get, like, you know, crushed or stabbed. Sure. But, like, the people who get their souls sucked out or the people who are set on fire and then stabbed mm. through That's the chest. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's fixable. There's a, also a lot of betrayal in this. There's sure. like layers upon yeah. layers. Like you Wasn't find that, out the... That's what she's trying to figure out, right? Like who, like why her mom was betrayed? Right, Isn't that by like Yvette. Element? I think part yeah. of it, And there's yeah. a mask involved, pieces of the mask. Yeah. We haven't even gotten to that because like that's a whole deal. That's that's another plot thread I feel like will be resolved like later. Yeah. Right. That we can't get into now, but like what's happening now while she's in sar- sarcophagus, there's a big battle on right. an airship like blimp situation. The people who captured... Uh, her and put her in their sarcophagus, including Corvin and this eye patch cat from the court of the dust. I love right. the eye patch cat. Same. Same. Eye patch cat goes on a rampage, murders a ton of people. Yeah, it's very good. I, I don't think, know what's happening, but I love it. I think <laughs> I, I I pulled out a panel, um, mm-hmm. and it's it's just like this wild panel of them fighting like the people who come off the zeppelin, mm-hmm. and it's just like this wild panel of just like. Eye patch cat with katanas, mm-hmm. and then winged humans mm-hmm. and winged animal humans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who just all like have weapons yeah. and are fighting like these rad witch ladies. Mm-hmm. Bayonetta and it's just, three like, looks great. Yeah, it's <laughs> wild. It's, it's just wild. It's good stuff. Like I love it. Uh, yeah, that's like uh, like you think there's spectacle before in the book, like with like goop right. monsters and everything like that, but like like the big battle at the very end is like. Like it like takes it up a notch like to a level like I like I guess wasn't expecting I guess right it's still all done with the same like very detailed it's like super high fidelity art yeah and so it's like just like very overwhelming and in the meantime like she uh, Mike had like sort of like like makes a bargain more or less with the goop monster because I call it the goop monster because we don't know its name because that's like a big part of the story mm-hmm. right is that the she remembers in her memories that her mother told. Her, the monster's name, yeah, and and a lot of like, like cultures, a lot of folklore names hold a lot of power, right? So you assume that'll come into play later. So she she busts out and then she fights uh, Destria. Is that her name? She's like the is that the the, the high the boss the yeah. high witch of the yeah other. that sounds uh, like a mother, Kingdom Hearts Mother Superior uh, uh, Organization Thirteen mm-hmm. character. Yes, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> she heartless or nobody or. Okay, no, I don't know. She is a god. She takes off her mask like for the first time in this series, and like she has like three eyes. Yeah, and it seems like there's like a big goop monster battle going yeah. on. Who can we? We haven't talked about the gods. So in the world, there are these yeah gods, ancient gods that were mm-hmm. killed, mm-hmm. and their spirits are kind of 
wandering, just looming yes. around the world. I love these god ghosts. They're Same. actually my favorite part of the whole comic really? because they're just kind of like looming mm-hmm. around the world, and they're yeah. like, "Do you pray to those?" And I'd be like, "Fuck yes." Yes, I do. Oh yeah, do, do you, you see, see them? <laughs> it's crazy looking. Can you imagine not praying to them? Imagine <laughs> if you like get on their bad side; they're just gonna like, come down and do whatever. But it they're is... also like dead or something, and... and and like people like look up at them because they've seen them all the time. They just appear at night in the sky, like uh, like uh, the Northern Lights or something like mm, that. But yeah. it's like a little aurora borealis. It's a phenomenon that everyone just kind of accepts. It's right, aurora borealis, but tentaclier. Yeah. yeah, and eyeballier. <laughs> at the yeah. same time, yeah. It is, but it is something again out of Princess Mononoke at the yeah. very end. It's like this big looming goop mm-hmm. creature, and one of them, uh, it's one of the ones that appears towards the end. You see that, like towards the bottom of his design, mm-hmm. because he he's so big that like, he, the bottom of like where his ribs would be or like the top of his hips maybe, mm-hmm. um, is like a mountain range. Sure. So like that's how big they are, mm-hmm. um, and it's, um. The uh, at the bottom where the ribs are, you can see it like like the skin kind of sloughing off, mm-hmm. and you can mm. see like the bones, and then you can see yeah. his spine. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you are seeing them like as they died or something, or oh, if that's gross. just like them, um, yeah. which I think is they like their bottoms blown up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a good time to transition to our panel pick because I think the one you're describing is my panel pick. Oh, yeah. Because there's a couple. There's one near the beginning and there's one near the end of these, like, gods that are yeah. just hanging out there. And yeah. it's just, uh, it's it's very striking. It's a it's a very great bit of world building that, that, like, a lot of the other parts in the comic are, like, very overly explained, but these aren't. Mm-hmm. They they are just, they just are. Yeah. They, they are just in the world and you just... That we are shown and not told much about them. Yeah, it's like the one thing that you just have to accept. Mm-hmm. Like everything else, you kind of accept it as it's happening, and then somewhere along the line, it gets explained mm-hmm. in the first volume. But these are just like, oh yeah, there they are. Hey, what's up? The most we get explained about these are in the sort of interim panels, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that um, are really nice. To break up each uh, sure. issue, mm-hmm. which is done by this other cat, mm-hmm. this sure. like um, teacher cat, wise teacher yeah. sort of mother cat, yeah. right. with the three very cute like little roly poly yeah. kittens, yeah. and she's like it, periodically explaining more about the lore of the world, which mm-hmm. I <laughs> loved. <laughs> I thought it was so good. Like, please teach me the whole history of this land, mm-hmm. and she explains like all the different races of the world. Mm-hmm. And one is the gods, mm-hmm. yeah. But they're gone now. It's a nice guess. way to do a little info dump, you know. Yeah, yeah. Without just ha- having it be like a codex entry, which I would just like never read in an RPG or something. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> no, it does remind me of a lot of you know going back to the the anime and manga influences. There are so many manga that I've read that have just like. Or, or like even in anime, they'll have like a post credits or or just before the credits uh, thing of just like let's explain this to you, mm-hmm. you know. Or I, I think they used to do that a lot with um, anime that was really popular with people who didn't know a lot about anime or Japanese culture. So mm-hmm. they would like have these little like this is what this word means mm-hmm. because you're going to be hearing it a lot. So we're going to explain it, and it's like <laughs> this cute little like thirty second segment. Sure. Um. So I like that they did that here because. Good lord, did we need it? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Carolyn, did you have a panel pick? I did have a panel pick. Um, my panel pick was the also kind of to do with the lore of the world. Mm-hmm. It's when the the main characters in kind of a dream state. I think mm-hmm. this might be when she's in the sarcophagus or something, but she's looking at these almost like hieroglyphic walls, mm-hmm. and it really hints to like there's a lot of lore here, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of history. And if you keep reading, like you'll slowly uncover it and get mm-hmm. more clues to mm-hmm. how and why all this happened, sure. and possi- possibly a great destiny for our main, <laughs> our main monstrous heroine. Will she succumb? Will she succumb to the monster? And also, like, is the monster near the end of the story? We start getting a little into like good and evil. Are uh-huh. they as simple? Sure. Yeah. Oh, and then we haven't talked about the big twist at the end of the book, which right. is Micah's sort of sister, adopted yes. sister figure who she mm-hmm. was in this like monster concentration camp with and then they got out somehow. They she's like working for the court of the dust. Sure. Yeah. Yes. 
Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like it's not, not a big reveal because we haven't talked about it as much here, but like it, it is like the big hook for the next volume. Yeah. Uh, of the book, which you know, I'm very interested to read it, but I feel like I want to come back to it when it's all done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't. I can't start again and then like lose track of all these characters. Yeah. And like everything's so dense. Like, I think I feel like I had a better handle on it reading it the second time than I did the first Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Mm. Um, but. If I'm going to read it again, I want the, the complete story. Just give me all of it. Mm. Um, Is there like a, a projected end in sight? Like, are they know, expecting I, to have like five or or ten or whatever? I have. I'm not sure. It's so hard with comics, like much like TV shows, where you're not sure how long. Sure. Like yeah. the artists and authors often, if they if they can, they want to do it for as long as possible. Because sure. a, it's a gig, and b, they like love the sure. story, but. It must be so hard to craft a story without knowing when it will end. Sure. You know? Because yeah. as you were saying, like, pacing turns out pretty important in storytelling. Yeah. You yeah. know? Because I felt like they were cramming so much in the first volume that I, I was just getting a sense that it had to be, like, five. Five volumes, mm -hmm. you know? Because if you're going to just, you know, hand me a, a this is what this means mm -hmm. volume, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a good portion of this is just learning what everything is mm -hmm. you know i feel like if you were expecting to have a lot of volumes you would have paced that out more mm -hmm. but right, right. almost everything gets somewhat explained in this one at least so that you know the gist of what everything is other than like the mask and the the old gods it, it yeah it kind of sets it up in a way that like you know what questions Mm -hmm. you're hoping will be answered. Mm -hmm. Right. When in the beginning, it's just like, here's like everything. You're a baby yeah. in the woods. And yeah. You don't know anything, but there's oh, magic. Yeah. Someone sucked out your soul. Oh, you're see, dead. You're, oh, no, you're fine. You shouldn't have been a child in the woods. <laughs> uh, Julia, it sounded like we already went over uh, your panel pick. Yeah, my panel, again, is just, is just that bonkers panel of just, you know, if... I feel like if they want to advertise this yeah. comic, they should just show that panel because it's just like, what is happening Eye patch here? Eyepatch cat on the rampage. Eyepatch cat, so cool. winged, beautiful people, <laughs> half animal people, winged things. Sure. There's a fight. This There's is rad. for everyone. I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Carolyn, would you recommend this to others? Do you see yourself uh, going forward with the series right now? Do you want to wait oh, on yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to read the the uh, second volume ASAP mm -hmm. as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. And um, I highly recommend this series. It's, like, really great. Probably not the best for little kids because some of it is pretty violent and uh -huh. disturbing uh -huh. yeah so n maybe not that sure it always makes me so mad when they have like all the comics in a bookstore like thrown together in the same sure. section and mm -hmm. you can tell yeah. that the people running the store like aren't into comics i'm like this one is a porn and this one is just violence like yeah. you yeah. should not you know yeah and this one is teaching abcs for children right like, they're all like right next <laughs> to these each are other. not the same we have captain underpants next to preacher that's me yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of an issue <laughs> uh julie what would you what would you think what, what was uh your experience like reading this again do you feel like you want to continue or are you interested in seeing more of the story um yeah i would definitely read it i think once the end is in sight mm -hmm. um, because, as you said, it, it's a lot of things to remember and retain for next time, which mm -hmm. I feel like I will not be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I feel like I, I would recommend this to very specific people sure. who are more maybe people who are into like war movies and things. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Just because there is that like, you know, atrocities thing, and, mm -hmm. and some people I know don't necessarily want to read about you yeah. know that that sort of right stuff which is yeah. fine you know teach their own um i get it um but you know Julia i really loves reading about i love it <laughs> um but it's you know it it's for very specific people um it's really good it's the kind of thing where i want to maybe not necessarily like read again right now just because i just read it um but i i do there's like so many pages that i want to go back to and just mm. look at from an mm -hmm. art perspective sure um that 
panel, the, the only thing I've been thinking about this entire podcast is that panel where she's in the sarcophagus for mm -hmm. the first time. Sure. And the details on that sarcophagus and the way that it's yeah. like put together reminds me of um, like old animatronics from like the 1700s. Those mm. really oh. like intricate ones that can like write their own name and stuff. Yeah. Like there's something so detailed and beautiful and ornate to mm -hmm. it where it looks like it might almost work. You yeah. know, and mm. and there's something to, like, from an art perspective, where I, I really admire that. Yeah, mm. you know, it's like something you find in in a Dwemer mine in Skyrim or something. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to like go back and and look at so much of the art because I I love how you know the main character is drawn and mm -hmm. there's like you know so many mechanical things that are so cool that mm -hmm. it's hard to do mechanics next to just like really beautiful curvy ladies mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. hard to like be an artist who can do both yeah get you an artist who can do both <laughs> it's not a tequila i guess yeah uh but yeah uh i think i'm on the same uh page as you as far as like just like waiting till uh the series is out i yeah. mean i can't exactly watch it all on Crunchyroll or whatnot uh but uh i am uh, definitely interested in, in catching up on it uh, once it ends, I I, I should have looked up like if there is an end in sight, but like mm -hmm. and do as far as I know, issues are still coming out. I think it might be on a somewhat delayed schedule because I'm sure this art takes forever. I'll you know so quite a while, and you know they set the standard, so they have to keep up that standard for a while unless they switch artists, which is not impossible. But like for usually like creator owned books like these, like right. usually they they stick together. Yeah, but, it's also um, such a specific art style that yeah. I couldn't see them. Yeah. replacing her i wonder like this would be this seems like it would be like a great like series or like movie or something like that mm -hmm. but it also seems like one of the most expensive like tv shows or like movies oh you yeah could possibly make mm -hmm. you yeah. know now i'm also thinking about the anime the fortress of kanabari or... right not attack on titan not attack on titan but that one with all the beautiful ornate guns that shoot zombies oh yeah but it's like there's a lot of beautiful mechanics and things sure. and i i I feel like they have similar vibes. So I feel like if mm -hmm. you were into that anime, you'd probably be into this comic as well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, good to know. Uh, well, uh, Julia, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you for and having me. This, this book, which we all enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn also. Yep. Thanks. As Sh always. Totally. Happy <laughs> to be here. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you at home. Yeah. You're hey, the real joining. heroes of the story. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that about wraps up, it up for us today. So uh, until next time, we uh, will see you in the funny papers. Hey, everyone. If you like this, be sure to check out dropout.tv. It's by far the best way to support Dorkly. And you can get access to your favorite uh, Dorkly content a week early. Woo! How about that? You can also get a week free trial by going to dropout.tv and get access to tons of exclusive dropout shows like Paranoia, like Um Actually, like Troopers. There, I could go on, but I won't. Check it out.